Today we're going to do a fun video. We are going to compare the Battleborn and the Ruxu. These are both lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're 12 volt, 100 amp hour with the same discharge rate. But this one costs a lot more money and this one's a lot cheaper. I mean, we're talking $950 versus I think $700. And they have mostly the same stats. They have the same capacity, the same discharge rate, the same charge capability. The biggest difference that you will notice on the data sheet is that this one you can put in series. This one it doesn't tell you this one it has low temperature disconnect so if you're in a freezing environment and you try to charge this it will stop that from happening it's one of the few drop-in replacements besides rely on that actually has that feature if you try to charge this battery in a freezing environment it will be permanently damaged and you will lose all of your money for your battery bank if you buy four of these all of that money will instantly go out the window that's why I typically always recommend the Battleborn for beginners because you can't really screw it up. You just plug it into your system and it will manage itself really nicely no matter what temperature or what kind of loads you put. There are a lot of safety features in this one. But for the price, this thing seems pretty cool. So I want to do a capacity test because Battleborn has talked a lot about how they match their cells and how they have a really good supplier with high quality cells. And if that's true, that means that the capacity test will be really good. And this one, even though it's really cheap, I'm not sure what cells they're using or if they're matching them. Also, with the low temperature disconnect, you can add a Victron controller to this one and make your own low temperature disconnect system. So if you're on a budget, there are options available. So I'm not going to try to just throw this out the window just because it's really cheap. I want to see if it's good. And their other batteries are really good. Their Sinopoly cells are awesome. So if a cheap option can do it, I would think that it's this one. And before we test these, let's look at the case. This thing is fancy and nice. You have these huge bolt holes where you can't over torque them. It's like a really strong nylon. This one feels like a McDonald's kids toy. It's kind of shiny and cheap plastic feel. It feels like it's thinner. Like it's, it's different, but the terminals are so cheesy. Look at this. I mean, it looks pretty darn cheap. So even though this is cheap and I would never use this, you could totally use a bolt and it would work really nicely. Another big difference I forgot to mention is that the Battleborn has a warranty and that is so important with these batteries because usually lithium iron phosphate cells will last a very, very long time. Usually it's the BMS or something around the battery that will fail first. And inside of this battery, I have no idea what they used. A lot of times the wires that go from the terminals down to the BMS can be too small. So if you try to drive large loads with the cheaper ones, they can actually fail or melt. And that's where the warranty comes in. You're actually paying for the warranty. That's why the Battleborn costs quite a bit more. And these are also rated for the same capacity. They are the same chemistry, so I would imagine that they would last the same amount of time. The big difference here though also is how well these can dissipate heat. If the BMS gets really warm and it's next to the cells, depending on the design, you'll have more degradation. So it's hard to tell that because nobody's had a Battleborn for like 10 to 20 years. No one's had a Ruxu. I mean, these are very new batteries. So we really don't know how long people will actually have these last for. So the best way that we can test these is doing a capacity test. This will tell us a lot about how well these cells are matched and the design of the BMS and inefficiencies inside. It is a direct way to test which battery is better than another battery. So what we're going to do is charge these all the way up. We're going to set the absorption until we hit float and then we're going to do a discharge test. Now I hit float voltage, so this battery is fully charged. And now I have an inverter connected with a Hall effect sensor and a battery capacity or watt hour counter. And so we put the heat gun on mode five and we are pulling 954 watts continuous. So the Battleborn has been pulling this load for about an hour and you can feel there is a lot of heat on the top of the battery and that's where the BMS is. Everything else on the sides is pretty cool to the touch. But yeah, you can feel a lot of heat up here. So the voltage is starting to drop. It might cut off soon. Uh-oh, 10.7 volts. All right guys, we're gonna turn it down a little bit to see if we can extract even more power out of this battery. Let's turn it down a little bit more. Uh-oh. 
We have three volts at the terminals. So yeah, this thing is completely finished. So it did not pull off the 1200 watt hour capacity that it's rated for, but this is a very large load. We are like maxing this thing out. So it's understandable. So now we're gonna swap out batteries and put in the Ryuksu, whatever you call it. I can't wait to see what the other battery does. I'm so excited. These stupid Victron input terminals, they just pulled the wire out. I hate these terminals, man. Victron needs to make them better. And this has already been charged, but we're gonna charge it up to float so it's at the same exact voltage as we had the Battleborn. So now the Victron hit float mode, and that means that this battery is completely full. And the hard part about this test is making sure that we do the same exact load as we did for the Battleborn. So now we're gonna turn on the inverter. And we are using setting five at full, so we have the same amount of amps coming from the battery as in the last test. And we're gonna power this load until it hits 1,100 watt hours, and then we're gonna lower it just as we did with the Battleborn so that this test is accurate and fair. We are at 400 watt hours, and these terminal screws are hot. Like, really hot. Look at that, guys. 109 degrees Fahrenheit on these terminals. They are hot. So it's doing surprisingly well. Now we're gonna drop down the amp load because we're at 1,100 watt hours. Okay, the battery capacity monitor is shut off. And about one minute later, it turned itself off. Honestly, that is pretty impressive. I am amazed. The only bad thing are these terminals. I can't believe the capacity did that well. I was expecting this to fail a lot sooner. That's incredible. Now we're gonna add a bonus test. I have a sealed lead acid high quality AGM. This is a 100 amp hour, just like the other batteries we tested. And it even says on the front, 1,200 watt hours. So we're gonna do a capacity test. And this will be very interesting. I've always wanted to do this. So the same setup as before. I noticed though that they're using the same case as the Ruxu. And this is a high quality brand battery. So maybe their case that they're using is not that bad at all. It's just a standard case. And what's cool to note is that this will suffer from the puke hurt effect. So when we're pulling 80 amps from this small of a battery, we are going to notice it. it's gonna create a lot of heat. So there are gonna be more losses. And first we have to zero out our watt meter. And we have the heat gun on the same setting that we did with the previous tests. Look at that voltage drop, you guys. We're at 11.9 the moment we started. This is why you do not use lead acid anymore. That is horrible. And due to the losses of using a lead acid battery at this rate, we can expect almost 840 watt hours out of our 1200 watt hour battery because of the puke hurt effect. So when people tell you that lithium costs more, tell them to calculate the usable capacity for your application and then compare it to lithium iron phosphate with the charge cycle life. These are the most expensive, heaviest, oldest type of batteries on the planet, but people still use them. All right, guys, this thing's about to shut down at 740 watt hours. I don't want to damage this thing, so I might actually turn it off sooner. We're going to decrease the load to like that much. I hope we can at least get 800 watt hours out of this freaking battery. So on the company's website, they say that you want to do a depth of discharge at most of 80%. So with puke hurt effect, that's 672 watt hours. So we're gonna stop this test at 782 watt hours. So it did well for a lead acid battery, but God, that is horrible. And we're at 11.48 volts. So we got 67 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour lead acid. That is just crazy. If you calculate the usable for this, you'd have to buy two of these almost to make one lithium iron phosphate battery for large loads. 
So let's talk about the results. I think most of them were self-explanatory. And yes, I dislike lead acid, but I know why some people still use it. And if you have a large bank and you have low C rates, which most solar power systems have, you can get by with a lower pucurt effect. So in this test, it was very pronounced, but in other circumstances, you won't even notice it as much. I mean, if you have a really large battery bank, you won't notice it at all, really. And these AGM sealed, they have a colombic efficiency of around 95% max. And these are like 99%. So these can technically be okay, but man, the charge cycle life and internal resistance alone and the voltage sag just make these a horrible idea, in my opinion. Even if you forget about how much cheaper lithium batteries are over the long term, these just performance-wise, I just can't imagine going back to these. Next thing we should talk about is the difference in capacity. I tested this one first in a colder room. When we tested this one, we already had the heat gun running. And so the hotter the battery is, typically the performance will increase and so will the capacity. So that's why I think we had a slight marginal increase in capacity with this one. It was in a hotter ambient temperature environment. And they were practically the same watt hour capacity, but this did it. I mean, I thought that this was going to be like 100 or 200 watt hours below this one. That's just what I was expecting. But it actually pulled through. It had practically the same capacity as, had more capacity. I mean, that's incredible. The only problem with the Ruxu is these terminals. I'm going to email them and tell them because man, they have a really sweet battery. And if you add a Victron smart battery sense and charge controller with, so that you can have your own low temp cutoff, you can buy these for super cheap and actually have an awesome system. But something that I can't really test in any of these videos is how these work over time. I wish I could do a capacity test after using it for like seven years. And then we would really know how well these perform. Because honestly, considering how hot this terminal got, I don't know how big the wires are that are going up to this so I'm gonna tell her name's Rachel she's like the main person that handles distribution through Amazon for Ruxu and I'm gonna ask her to take pictures inside because I really want to know what's inside of this thing and I can't really cut this open I've seen other people open this exact case in other YouTube videos and it seems pretty dangerous and I might damage the components inside and I really don't want to mess with that and the Battleborn got pretty hot on the top I was not expecting it to get so warm but, but something we should think about though is that the BMS is away from the cells it's elevated on this one it didn't really get warm anywhere so maybe their BMS inside is close to the cells and maybe this one will not last as long as the Battleborn where the cells are down here and the BMS is lifted up maybe they did that for a reason but yeah I really don't know how long the Ruxu will work I know that the cells will absolutely last a very long time but if everything else around it is not strategically designed then who's to know how long this thing will last asked for. But it is a very big difference in price. I mean, you can save over $1,000 when you buy four of these batteries versus Battleborns. And the Battleborns, they just went up in price again. I mean, when Battleborns first came out, I would see them for like $900, and then at the trade shows, they would sell them for $850. Now they're $950. And I love the company. Everybody there is super friendly, and everybody over here is super friendly. Rachel is on it. She responds quickly. She tells you exactly what you need to know, unlike other manufacturers. I mean, I emailed the VMAX forever and they would never respond. And then when they did, I asked for a 24 volt. I never got a response back. And that kind of matters when you're trying to buy batteries. You want the support there. If you have a warranty issue and nobody's going to respond to any of your emails, you're in for a big, bad surprise. With the Battleborn, if this thing messes up, I know they're going to swap it out they will make sure that they figure out exactly what's wrong. And I think Rachel at Roksu would give you a new battery, but it's not nearly as personable as Battleborn. Battleborn is on it. They do know what the customers want and they're giving it. And there are some other options. You can get the Renogy one and it has a low temperature cutoff and it's cheaper than the Battleborn. So that's also another option as well. But the problem with the Renogy is you cannot put it in series, just like the Ruxu. So if you want to use something in series, you're going to have to go with Battleborn or maybe a Kilovolt. And I think Re Relyon has most of theirs that you can put in series. They're new lineup you can but I'm not sure about their basic ones that are in the similar class as this because if you're going to go through rely on with their new system with the can communication and all that that thing costs like twelve hundred dollars so it makes the Battleborn super cheap. That's what's funny is a lot of people don't realize like when even though this is expensive 
um, there are a lot more expensive options on the market. So, so you really have to think about all the factors and all of the options that you have. And if you want something really cheap but super awesome, check out my DIY lithium iron phosphate batteries. We did a capacity test last week for my last video and it was like 110 or 105 percent of its rated capacity. Sino poly cells, when they're matched properly, they work really well. But you also have this option. So yeah, check out my website if you want to learn more about these battery kits. So as always with solar stuff, the more you spend, the cheaper it is in the long term. And I don't know if I could actually buy like four or six of these. I would feel a little bit iffy. I don't know. Especially with how hot these things got. That was like a little scary. So yeah, what do you guys think? There are lots of other options on the market and I would love to hear if there's something that competes in this price range, if there's something cheaper. So please let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Super fun test. I learned a whole lot. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.